All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Austin. Uh, I want to welcome you to our crop scouting and, and general ag note taking webinar by Juniper Systems today. We're going to try to keep this to about 30 minutes or less. So if you have any questions throughout our chat, and we'll, we'll address them afterwards. Uh, this is also being recorded and we'll post it to our YouTube channel so you can revisit this anytime if, if you want to go over it again. Like I said, my name's Austin. I'm the Ag Market Sales Rep here at Juniper Systems. I've been here about four years. Uh, started out in the Harvest Master Ag Research Division. Also on with us is Trevor Brown, our Uinta Software Product Manager. Um, he's got a wealth of knowledge in this area and really just has years of experience in, in data collection. So again, feel free to post questions in the chat or you're, you're welcome to reach out to either of us personally anytime. I want to spend just a minute going over the agenda. Um, we have just a simple agenda for us here. I'll introduce our company, you know, give a, a brief background for those who aren't quite uh, familiar with us yet. And then we'll talk about some of the key recurring challenges that we want to address with this. After that, I'll turn the time over to Trevor and he'll go over what this would entail or, or what you might need to get started. And then, and then he'll go over Really the bulk of this demonstration, he'll walk through a couple of the examples of where the software we're going to talk about can be a problem solver, you know, both in the field and in the office. So Juniper Systems was founded in 1993. It's actually owned by Campbell Scientific, both of which are based here in, in Logan, Utah. We're very much a family company. Um, we've maintained that sense of pride and, and ownership that comes from a small family business. Even now, we've grown to around 200 employees and maintain a customer base worldwide. We've still maintained that, again, that, that pride, sense of ownership over our product and our customers. We actually entered the market back in 93 in the ag research realm with an on-combine way system for plot research. So our roots really go back uh, to the very beginning in ag. Our founder actually came from a dry wheat farm just down the road from us. And um, though we service quite a few different markets now, we've really kept that passion for ag throughout the growth of the organization. We actually design, manufacture, and, and maintain our products right here out of Northern Utah. We're really proud of this for a number of reasons, but one of the biggest benefits we've seen is, is the transparency and quality uh, throughout the different phases of our product development. Uh, you know, if a customer has an issue with something, I can just run down the hall, talk to an engineer, <clears throat> talk to the engineer, let's say, that designed it, and then talk to the person that manufactured it. And this, this, uh, this transparency and everyone being in one location has, has really helped us deliver the best quality product and, and, and customer service possible that we can. So I want to talk for just a minute about the different challenges that we want to discuss today uh, that all come with data collection. You know, that's the business we're in. We could go on for hours about all the little headaches that come with trying to take and, and manage data. But these ones, these points here are just some of the bigger ones that we kind of, we hear our customers bring up, kind of the recurring themes. So the first one I want to address is navigating or re-navigating to a, a field location. So, you know, have you ever marked some spots in the field for whatever reason? Let's say it's, a, you know, a dry area, a low area, and there's some pest damage, disease, whatever it might be, and then not been able to find it again. You know, maybe it's been eight weeks since you were there last, the crop canopy's just blown up and you can't find it anymore. The landscape's different. Uh, or maybe you want to take so many different points and, and record so many notes, it's impossible to keep them on paper in your head. So that's something that we want to provide a solution to is being able to re-navigate to these places. Our second challenge is with the current applications that are available out there. Maybe you've investigated a company, a, a product, or or some kind of data collection platform and it's too difficult or complex to use for taking simple notes. Or maybe it's too much of a cookie cutter software and you know only 10% of this application suits your needs. So, you know, you, you still pay for 100%. Well, we hear this all the time, you know, how someone might want to take um, 
map some points, but they don't want to hire an expert in GIS just to do it. You know, maybe the applications are just too complex. The third issue or challenge is paper. Um, paper's got its use. Sometimes it's good, you know, it, but when you're walking through mid-season corn, let's say, taking notes and it's nice and wet and jungly in there, paper's not really your best friend, right? It doesn't come out the same way it went in. It's just not always the best solution for an ag setting. You know, you can lose it, it gets ruined, it's difficult to use in the field, there's only one copy. How do you utilize the info, transfer it, or present it professionally, let's say, and what if you can't read it because the handwriting's no good, right? There's just too many variables with, with handwriting on paper. And then the final one I want I want to hit on is is general data management. And really, this is just trying to figure out um, how do you take data in the field, bring it back to the office, back to the field, and then back to the office, and so on and so forth. Uh, how do you do this the best way? What what's the best way to capture it, to share it, to to manage it? How do you maintain some uniformity and efficiency in your collection process? <clears throat> So this is where the UNA software comes in. I want to turn the time now over to Trevor. He's going to go over a few examples of how this application is currently being used in, in solving some of these issues with our current customers. So Trevor, if you want to take it away. Thanks, Austin. And thanks, everybody, for joining today's webinar. And again, my name is Trevor Brown. I'm the UNA software product manager. And before I jump into uh, a demonstration of some examples of, of the UINTA software. I just wanted to also let everyone know what are the different components and everything you need to make this all work. So really the basic things you need are some kind of mobile device or tablet. Uh, we manufacture premium ultra rugged tablets and data collection uh, devices here at Juniper Systems. They're both Windows and Android based. And these are great options. You know, these are a lot of our customers prefer these when they're collecting professional data. Uh, they can give them to field crews. They're meant to last. They're built to last, and they can be serviced uh, if needed at our factory. They're supported. There's always somebody here that can uh, answer a live support call if uh, if you have an issue. And uh, uh, so we're very proud of these devices. And they're uh, and. But we wanted to also make it clear, in order to do the, the things we're talking about today, you can also use your own device. So if the type of job you're doing uh, doesn't require uh, an ultra rugged or premium type device, and you have already uh, a phone or a tablet, um, you can also use your own device as well. Now, many customers do that. It really kind of depends on your needs and uh, the type of job that you're doing. So at a minimum, you do need some kind of a mobile device or tablet. Uh, either a Windows or Android based uh, tablet as well. So the next component of this solution is really a lot of our customers um, have a need to have higher accuracy uh, GPS than what their phone or tablet uh, has available to them. So a typical smartphone, uh, we see typically when we compare those to survey, uh, survey markers, we see something in the neighborhood of 12 to 30 meter, meters is quite typical. And so for a lot of job applications, that may be good enough. It may be good enough to uh, mark those locations and, and you can uh, return to the spots where you took those field notes, for example. Uh, but for a lot of customers, they might be doing something such as wanting to return to a, a specific plant or a very specific location where they placed flags because maybe they're, they're wanting to identify uh, different treatments or things they applied to a certain row. Um, in those situations, uh, our geode GPS receiver is a great option. And how that works, essentially, as you can see the guy there in the middle, um, it's a GPS receiver. And it's probably one of my favorite products we've made here at Juniper Systems. It's just very practical and easy to use. You just turn it on. It starts tracking satellites. You can pair it to your device through Bluetooth, just like you would a headset or something like that. And you will then turn your device, it, the, it becomes your location provider and your device will then uh, get somewhere about one to two foot accuracy. There's methods to get even higher accuracy, but a pretty common uh, situation in agriculture is the one to two accuracy, foot accuracy is good enough 
and it just works when you turn it on and it pairs to your device. So if you have that type of situation, uh, a geode is a good option. It's very practical and easy to use, and it comes at a, a really fair price uh, relative to other high accuracy type devices. And it's kind of a no nonsense, hassle free way to add that high accuracy. Um, but it is optional. It really depends on your job. The third component that we're going to talk in more detail about is our Uinta software. And um, that's where you need that. It needs to run on one of your mobile devices. And now I'll kind of go to the next slide and talk to some details of Uinta. So Uinta, the name Uinta comes from uh, some big mountains that are not far from our factory in northern Utah. And uh, it's we, we really designed this software because we wanted to have a software that was easy to use. It could be adapted to different situations without being a programmer or applying different complex technology. So if you remember you know, anything from this webinar, remember that this software can be customized to your job. So where Austin was mentioning earlier about some of these other kind of cookie cutter type options, those are great for certain situations. But if you deviate even a little, sometimes it's hard to, to align those to your specific application. And that's what Uinta is meant to do. Uh, so uh, we're going to show some different examples of how that works here in a little bit. Uh, it, it is really user friendly. That was important to us as well. We recognize that a lot of our customers are kind of experts at other things. And technology is a way to you know, make your job in life easier, uh, not be the focus of your job. And, and so really that was a goal of us to just make this kind of a no-nonsense, hassle-free software that's easy to use. And more importantly, sometimes is to easy to train other users. So for example, if you have field techs or people that are assisting you, it's very easy to get them up and running as well. Um, so know that you went to software also is a mapping software. So you can map points, lines, and areas, but it's also a form generation software. So it's, you can customize the forms to match. So when you map a point line or area, you can uh, record notes about those, those things that you're mapping and, uh, and do that in the way that matches your job, like we mentioned earlier. It's very efficient. You can do it very fast. We, we wanted to make sure that we're trying to reduce number of taps on the screen and that type of thing as well. Um, the great thing about Uinta also is that the data that you can export and share with others comes in common file formats. We knew that our customers were going to run with their data in a variety of ways, and we, we didn't understand all the different ways, and we wanted to make that as easy as possible for others to get their jobs done. And so you're going to be able to export to things like PDF, Excel, Google Earth, Shapefiles, and even some other options as well. Um, it does have uh, available with every license, it's just you can use it or not, uh, an optional cloud synchronization. So if you have a multi-user environment, multiple people can be working on the same project uh, and see the data, for example, in the office, uh, when somebody's out in the field collecting data. Uh, as they're recording it, it will be visible then in the office. And that works in an offline state as well. So if you're working in an environment without the internet connection, um, it's okay. You, the, the device, you can collect that data just like you would. And whenever you, that device does have an internet connection, it will then synchronize uh, to the cloud and it's backed up. Um, lastly, we, we offer free live support for our customers. Uh, if, you, if you call in, you're always going to be able to talk to a live uh, person. And uh, that's very important at the core of, of our company as well. Um, with Uinta, you're going to know, you're going to find out that it's it, you can create custom project templates. And it's quite uh, easy to figure out how that works. But whenever somebody buys you into software, uh, we immediately uh, make available an option to schedule uh, uh, to schedule uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the meeting to create those custom forms. And so, and we give that free online remote training. So let's now jump into some of these specific examples that we were uh, discussing before. Okay, um, so in this webinar today, we're hoping to demonstrate uh, three examples. The crop scouting, uh, the first example would be a crop scouting paper form and converted to a digital Uinta app. So how do you migrate from a paper form to a digital uh, Uinta app? So we're going to show an example of that. 
The next one we're going to do is a vineyard virus app. So this is where somebody's going to go out, identify virus uh, on specific vines, and then some folks are going to come around and, and uh, navigate back to those locations and pull those uh, affected plants. Um, the last one we're going to demonstrate is a crop scouting field notes template that we designed here at Juniper System, which sort of is a more complex form. So if you have a lot of data that you're collecting over, for example, an entire grow season, this is a good example of how that works. But hopefully through this, these examples, you're going to find out and understand how this can be applied to your specific situation. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into the, the, the demonstration now. Bear with me. Okay. So when you first open uh, you with the software, you have a list of all of the different projects or jobs that you might be working on. And so you as I mentioned earlier, you went to software is a uh, it has a concept of project templates. So you have you can design a project template and then just reuse that over and over. And that's really great when you're working on repetitive type uh, data collection situation. So if you're visiting multiple fields, you can collect data in the same way. And this is really good to standardize your data collection, you know, especially if you're working with uh, others and you have a, uh, people that are also assisting you in collecting that data as well, such as field technicians and things of that nature. So uh, the first, uh, you know, as you see here, it's a very simplified view. You can get quite as many projects in here as you want. You can search those projects out, find the projects that you're working on, sort them, all of that kind of stuff. You can see here that a couple of these projects are local to this specific device. So I wasn't intending to use the cloud synchronization across multiple devices. But for the one of the projects here with a little cloud symbol, that's one where multiple devices can log into the same project and all collect data on the same project, um, either at the same time or at different times. It all just still goes into the same project. Uh, so the first example, let's go ahead and jump into the paper form converted to electronic. So I'm going to go quick back to the PowerPoint presentation here. And here's a good, let's go to the slideshow from the current slide. There we go. So this is a, a Michigan State University form uh, that we became familiar with. And it's a pretty typical one that we see. And you know, these come, these crop scouting forms. Uh, we see come in a variety of different formats and you know, different types of information, depending on the, the crops that you're working. But this is just a, a good example, one where you often have some, some typical information here at the start, and you have you know, the basic scouting information, such as the client, the location, the crop, uh, the date, you know, the scout, crop stage uh, that they're listing there. So the basic information about uh, this, this effort here. Um, as they go in and collect data, in this case, it's they're collecting data about pest diseases or di identifying different disorders um, in, on an onion crop. And so this is the paper form that somebody would go out, take to the field, and especially if your job is to go out and you fill out a lot of these paper, paper forms, uh, UINT is a good way to convert this to a digital app um, where you can then just enter your data electronically and, and have it backed up. And, and this really saves a lot of time later in the season as well, when you may have a big data entry effort to try and understand um, the different uh, types of data that you captured throughout the, throughout the, the grow season. Um, what you see here was the second page of this form where the user was kind of drawing just a quick hand draw of the field and the different locations of what they were, were trying to capture here. And so what we're gonna show here in the software is that uh, with Uinta, you can take this top form here and convert that very quickly to a digital form. This form took about 15 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes to convert from paper to digital. Um, and that's something, again, we have your back if you buy Uinta and your, uh, we can show you how that works and we will help you get those, uh, those templates set up and get you off and running as quick as you can. Um, with the map page, you also see, you know, we're gonna be able to have a much better map that you can revisit navigate, it's gonna be spatially accurate and have the information that you need. So let's flip back over to Uinta. Here's that project screen again. We're gonna jump into this project. So I named it paper form converted to electronic, but often you might have here field one, field two, or whatever you're naming the field. Maybe it's a client you name uh, the project, but in this case, just to kind of uh, demonstrate 
what we're trying to show here. We called it paper form converted to electronic. Um, it immediately opens up to, uh, in this case, it uh, a map that I've pre-created. But the way I did that was all I did was first connect my GPS by selecting the GPS icon here. And here's where I can choose. What do I want my GPS location source to be? So it can be your device internal location, or it can be, for example, a geode. And this is the one that would then give you that you know, one foot accuracy typical. So because I'm in a building, uh, I'm not outside walking around. I'm just going to use this Windows location services. So it's important to note a typical scenario would be that Uinta is loaded on uh, a Windows 10 device, like a laptop. This is running on my laptop. In the office, uh, this same project, though, however, can be uh, viewed in, on your mobile device and loaded uh, as well there. So I'm going to go ahead and connect just to kind of demonstrate you know, how easy it is. So all I've done, selected my uh, GPS location. It gives me my lat long, shows me my accuracy. Now, this accuracy is pretty terrible because it's just for demonstration purposes. It's our Wi-Fi, essentially. And so... You know, this is not really my location, and you can see the terrible accuracy. But if you were using a geode or your phone, you would see an accuracy up here, typical of about, you know, one foot with a geode or with your phone, you know, maybe 10 feet or whatever your your uh, phone accuracy GPS is going to be. So in this case, this is just a basic cornfield that we uh, kind of demonstrated there. And a user would, you'd see the blue dot over here because it's a stagnant Wi-Fi repeater. Um, but if it were, if we pretend that this is my, my cursor is my blue dot, you would see your blue dot walking around over this field. And every time you encounter uh, some issue that you want to capture, uh, all you do, your GPS is already connected. You would just be walking out. When you see something, you just hit this big orange plus button. And then you can choose from the different things. So I'm not going to be mapping a new field. But let's pretend I want to first start by uh, entering that scout info. And this is where, you know, I can go through and enter maybe the client name. Uh, maybe it's Juniper, Juniper Systems. You know, maybe there's some kind of description for this, you know, back 40 acres. And maybe I have predefined uh, the different types of crops I might encounter in my line of work. Um, you know, scout name, I'm going to put Trevor, crop stage, you know, one, two, three, four, five. The key thing, anything you see here can quickly be customized. So I would just go and I can add the types of fields. And this is the, what you would do the first time before you kind of go out to the field. But you could do this in the field if you wanted to. But this is the kind of design view where I can now add, you know, maybe some other um some other type of field, for example, maybe I wanted to add a new type. Um, and this is going to give me a drop down list that will then be available to me when I get back in the field. So, and if I go back now, notice I have type in my field. So, this is what we were talking about the flexibility of allow, where UINTA can be customized to your specific job. So, let's go ahead. There you go. There you see those options one, two, three. There's a lot of features that I'm not going to you know, share in too much detail at this point, but I can go and let users add to this, for example. But I'm going to go ahead and cancel this. But now let's say that I return to my, I maybe entered that initial uh, information from the paper form. Maybe now I want to map a new pest disease or a disorder. And all I would do, maybe it's issue four, I found some leaf blight. Maybe there's a description. I can add the photos really quick. You know, when I'm using Wi-Fi, I have to hit this little button and kind of, you know, add it where I want it. I'm going to use my mouse since I'm not out walking around in the field. I'm going to save that. You can see it. I kind of put it over here. But it's really easy to map. Uh, I can also see everything in a list view, kind of in a summarized list view. But this is just a quick way to go and demonstrate how you can convert a paper form to digital. And I'm going to jump to the next application. And we'll demonstrate a few more features. So the next application we are going to discuss is this vineyard virus survey. So this one's a good one because it's a simple, practical workflow, very simplified, 
uh, job that these customers are trying to do, but uh, very effective in getting their job done and very efficient. So let's go ahead and check this out. So here we have a, a you know, a, some vineyard vines, multiple fields. Imagine that you have somebody running around going and mapping, uh, you know, maybe Pierce's disease, maybe red blotch virus, that kind of thing. And they're going around and trying to identify specific plants that have this issue uh, because, and th th in this case, the user would want to map with a geode with a very high accuracy so that when, when they go out, map these different affected plants, they can then have users follow up and navigate to each one of those later and pull those specific plants. So this is a very uh, good workflow and simplified view. In this case, if I wanted to map a new uh, uh, disease or vi uh, virus that I encountered, I would just hit the plus button. In this case, there's only one option. Anything you see here can be customized, but in this case, all they needed was a virus mapping. So we're just gonna map a new virus. I would stand there with the GPS at that location. I would then select the type of virus, you know, whichever one it is, maybe it's red blotch. They wanted to know, is it, is it the first year this virus was detected at this plant? Maybe, maybe it wasn't. And, you know, again, because I'm using Wi-Fi, I'm just gonna update to add my latitude longitude, and then I just save and move on to the next one. Now that's gonna save that back at my current location back in Utah, but uh, in this case, if I were to then hand this over to the people responsible for going and pulling all those affected plants, all I need to do is select the red blotch, you know, affected plant. I can then select navigate. And what you're gonna see here is a very long ways to uh, get to that affected plant, but if you were at the local field, it would be much closer. You know, it would guide you right to that plant and tell you when you arrived at that plant. But you kind of get the idea that navigating to and revisiting these field note locations and affected plants is, is quite simple in Uinta. Uh, this is a good place to also demonstrate uh, what you can do with this data once you have it mapped out. So in this case, uh, here we have this field. Let's say I was done mapping out all of these different affected areas. Um, now, if I want to share this data with others, I just go to my, I'm in my project, maybe I'm back at the office because this data might've been collected with a, a mobile device out in the field, it's synced, synchronized to the cloud, and now I just see it on my laptop in the office. I can then just share it in a number of ways. There's PDF, you know, maybe I, you know, and this is where we allow you some, some places to customize, uh, you know, maybe it's customer one, Maybe I want to add my logo to this. Let's go ahead and just add the Juniper Systems logo. Um, and so you can, there's some other things. Maybe I want to print this out large or share it in different ways. There's different ways to kind of, you know, configure that PDF, but I, I'll just kind of take the default method. And what you first want to do though, is make sure you're sort of zoomed in, you know, exactly where you want to have that PDF map view. And I'm just going to export now to that PDF. And I kind of zoomed in pretty close, but you're just going to see the different types of virus. Um, you know, what kind of what you see is what you get. Wherever you zoomed, you can then have that. If you had photos, it's going to have all your data. You know, had I taken photos, those would have been listed here as well. But it's just a nice uh, PDF map, and it has all the different associated data as well. All right. So the next and final example that I wanted to share is something that's a little more involved or exhausted, uh, uh, a complex form. Like, so maybe you're wanting to work uh, across an entire grow season. Uh, this is a template that we developed based on customer feedback and uh, some in-house knowledge as well. And you can see this is a cloud, cloud project. So you know, maybe I wanna see this both in the office and the field. I'm gonna enter this project. It has a bunch of sub-projects. So maybe I have one customer and that customer has multiple fields. And this is a way to sort of group and categorize in those data. Um, and so um, here I have multiple fields for this particular customer. And I'm gonna go into the first cornfield. And here I get this sort of summarized detailed view of this cornfield. You know, it's already been mapped. Um, somebody went around and uh, used UINTA software to map the field boundary or perimeter. Maybe I drew it in the office, but you could also map it with a GPS. Uh, but here you see down below the linked in all the records that are associated with that field. So maybe you have pre-plant notes. Maybe you have some you know, current planting notes. 
Maybe there's post-emergent notes, mid-season notes, late season, harvest notes, and stresses. So you know, along the way, if you're capturing those stresses, this is kind of a summary view that I can go and say, okay, what were my pre-planted notes with this field? Okay, I use nitrogen uh, with an application rate of 190. Again, any of this stuff is up to you. You can configure it exactly how you want to match your job. So I'm going to head back to that sort of detailed view. You know, there's some stresses associated to it. Maybe found some chinch bugs, gray leaf spot. Maybe there's some de deer and pest damage. You can take those photos. You see, um, you know, hopefully this is not the, the status of your fields. Um, you know, seeing some of this weather damage is pretty bad. Um, this is a pretty troubled field here. Um, but I'm going to go back to our sort of detailed view. And now I can switch to a map view of the same information. Now I see, and I'm going to kind of zoom back to that field you can see that field boundary perimeter somebody went and mapped um, the area you can also um, add uh, the different things you might have observed in that field so somebody went and mapped the gray leaf spot that they found maybe there was some deer uh, damage maybe maybe it's that chinch bug and there's the weather damage so now you know exactly where that stuff is and you can revisit those spots or share this information with your customer or somebody who might be there to um, help resolve these issues. So this is a pretty good example of, of demonstrating, you know, something that could be used across an entire grow season where you can revisit that. Um, you know, I also can share that, uh, you know, this is, you know, if somebody were out collecting data, this is my, this is my office laptop, as I mentioned before. But a lot of this data may have been captured on like a phone or a tablet out in the field, and it just synchronized to the cloud. So if I add some new data here, it would then appear on this side. Uh, so and that works quite well. That's actually the most common uh, uh, way to approach these types of things. It's very easy to use. Um, so uh, hopefully this provides you a good example you know, of how Uinta could be applied to your specific scenario where we've got these different uh, types of examples. Um, we do have other examples. And, and what's nice is sometimes we can even adapt existing templates that can be reused. So for example, if I want to start a new vineyard virus survey for a different customer, maybe I want to go, you know, I'm just going to start it here locally. But I'm going to call it uh, virus survey two. Maybe it's customer two. But I'm going to base this based on this uh, previous project. So there it is. I want to do this new job just like I did this old job here. And I'm going to just say, okay. And now I'm ready to get started. I would just connect up my GPS, which I've done. And if I found a new virus at this location, I would just map it. Maybe I found a virus, symptom start. Maybe I wanted to take a photo and I could. But at this point, I've now saved that point and I'm ready to move on and find some more as well. But I just wanted to kind of quickly demonstrate how easy it is to start a new job or project. And you can uh, do that based on old ones or existing templates that you have. So uh, here at Juniper Systems, we really love data collection. We're really passionate about it, all kinds of data collection. Uh, if you have uh, uh, a specific scenario you would like to discuss with you, please call in. Email us, contact us. We'd be happy to discuss your situation and help you try to understand if it can meet your needs or not and make a recommendation uh, uh, based on uh, the experience and products that we have. Uh, so at this point, I'll turn it back over uh, to Austin. Perfect. Thanks, Trevor. So this we're, we're out of time. This concludes really what we have for you today. Um, and like Trevor said, hopefully this sheds a little light on the, you know, how customizable this is and, and what this could do to meet your needs. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us personally, our um, email and phone number right there. Uh, we offer this actually as a free demo uh, that we could help get you set up with. So give us a call, email, we can discuss, like Trevor said, your specific situation and see what we could do to make it work for you. Um, yeah, thanks. Again, this is recorded. We're going to post it to our YouTube channel. So if you want to revisit it or if there's anyone that you feel like this would benefit, uh, please do so. Thanks again, everybody.